Hi everyone, in this lecture we are going to talk about URL parameters. So URL parameters are very important whenever we want to create more than one page for our application, for our project. Um, so what I'm going to do first here is, this is the urls.py file within our library app. And in here, first off, I'm going to import from this current directory, which is just a dot, I'm going to import the views. Now, what is, it, what is it that I'm actually trying to do here? Now, whenever I click on any of these books or any of these records from the database, what do I want, do, what do I want this page to do? I want this page to be redirected to that specific books page with that specific books ID. And then it is going to show that all the information all over again. So we need to take a, we need to take into account the ID of the book as well. So here is where I'm going to create my path. Now, in case you want to build up on, on top of this application, uh, and as many uh, pages that you're thinking that you have to provide for the library app itself, all of the URL mappings for those, they have to be provided within this URL patterns. So for you, the, the work is easier because you don't have to worry about this URL patterns within the book lab app, within the book lab project itself. You don't need to worry about it because I've included that uh, library app within this project. Now, if you create another app, let's say you create an author's app, right? Then what you would do is you're going to include that within this URL as well and then never come back to it and just go ahead and handle this one. So I'm going to provide because we, we want to find out which book it is that the user has clicked based on the book's ID. So I'm just going to provide a parameter which is going to be this int is going to check that uh, the type is always going to be an integer. It's like book one, two, three, whatever. And then the um, actual ID is going to be the book ID. We are going to trace this or map this to the detail view function, which we are yet to create. And I'm going to give this uh, mapping a name, which is a best practice. And we are going to call it detail. After this, what I would like to do is uh, to go to our views.py file, come in here. And in there, I'm going to add this view, this detail view function. So let's go ahead and let's add that. So in here, I'm just going to come down here. But first things first, uh, I'm going to, on top, right next to that, I'm going to import get object or 404. And you know why I've done that, right? So whenever the user is trying to visit a page for which there is no ID, for which there is no book, right? Then we would want to show the user a proper 404 page. You could wrap that inside a try except block, but you could let Django handle it using this get object or 404 method, which is like easier and smoother. Uh, we are always going to pass in our request as well as the book ID. There we go. So in here, we have the book variable itself. This is going to be get object or 404. So what does this method actually say? This method is either going to get an object or it's going to show a 404 message. So there are only two use cases. If the object exists, it's going to show it. And keep in mind, this says get object because it's singular. When the user clicks on a single book, it's that's why it's book. That's why it's get object because it's singular. There is one book that the user can click at a time. That's why it's singular. So if that book exists, then we want to grab it from the book class. And the primary key for that is basically going to be the book ID. But if it doesn't exist, it's going to show a 404 message all by itself. So we don't have to really worry about it. And then what do we want to render? We want to render request uh, the library slash, so library slash detail dot HTML page. 
And in here we also have a context dictionary in which we have the book template variable set to the book variable that we have specified right here. So it is appropriate for us to go ahead and create that detail dot HTML dot HTML. Let's just provide in the basic boilerplate. And I could say like book lib. Just name it for now the book lib. Or uh, or better would be book details. There we go. So in here, what is it that I want to do? I want to create a page, a div with a class of page. Now, the thing that we are trying to do here is to show the title of the book, the author of the book, and the publication year of that book. So we could just do that using our uh, template variables. So the title of the book is going to be our H1. I'm going to say book.title. And then I'm going to create a UL. Keep in mind, we don't have to like really loop through anything because we are getting only one thing, one object, not an iterable. And then here I'm going to have an li that is going to be uh, book dot author. Just provide some space. And the other one is going to be book dot release year. Release underscore year. Save that. So with this, I'm just going to link this to the CSS as well. So the CSS, which we are yet to create, is going to be within the static library slash detail dot CSS. Let me go ahead and create that. So within this folder, within the library, I'm just going to create detail dot CSS. Just hit enter. Perfect. So now that I've created that, uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to provide the styling for this uh, CSS. And I'm not going to waste your time. I'm going to paste everything here. But I am going to uh, go through that. So we have, again, we have our universal selector where we grab all the margin, grab all the padding, and make them zero. And we say the box sizing should be border box. Uh, the height of the web page is 100% of its container. 100 viewport height. We have the same image with the same styling. Just we have this justify content, which is going to align our elements vertically, and we align it uh, in the center. Um, this is going to align it horizontally. This is going to align it vertically. This is these are the styles for each one for a lie page, and finally the UL. So let's save that. Let's save this one as well. Now, next up, um, let me just first off, uh, the server is running, right? So if I just save that, there we go. Let's just go to that page. So if I say slash, now keep in mind, all of the, um, all of the child's URLs, they are going to have a prefix of book clip. Why? Because within the main app, main project itself, we have specified this book lib. So all the other URLs that are being included in here, they must have this book lib. So it's going to be slash book lib slash one, two, three for any kind of book that we want to see the ID for. So if I say one and if I run it, you can see it says a thousand splendid suns. If I, if I say three, it's 13. Now you can see it. It, because we don't have 13 items within the database, it's going to handle that proper page not found error. But if I say like three and save it, there we go. It says the mountain egot, Khalid Hosseini. And we can see the uh, requests, HTTP request, in the server log. So there we go with that. Now, the only other thing that I really, that we really have to do here is just make sure that whenever we are in the home page, which I'm just going to go to there, whenever we are here, these links, these are clickable, these books. I just want to make them clickable so they uh, move or they redirect the user to that page that we just saw. So I'm going to come inside this HTML. So in here, now outside this div with a class of data, but keep in mind inside the loop, because when you're inside the loop, 
the logic will be repeated as many times as there are records in our database. So we want, because I don't want just one, one anchor element that is going to redirect the user. I want as many anchor elements uh, as we have um, books in our database. So we have one, two, three, four, five, and six. That means I have six anchor elements. So I'm going to say A. Now, we are going to use the URL template tag uh, in here because that is the best practice. We are not going to map this to the URL itself, but we are going to map it to the name of that URL mapping. So where is that? Where is the URLs.py? Here it is. So I'm just going to map it to this name. And the reason for that is in the future, if you change this URL, or if you say, okay, I don't want this book clip. I just want a slash, and then I want something else. Then you would have to change all the anchor elements that use that specific URL, which is like very horrible for maintainability purposes. So when you just map it to the name of that uh, URL mapping, then you won't have to like really deal with that anymore. So I'm just going to map it to it. And the rest of this, I'm going to cut it and I'm going to put it right after that one. And I'm going to save it. There we go. So I think everything is in order. Let's just save that. It says reverse for detail, no arguments not found when um, reverse match. There we go. So what is wrong in here? What did I do wrong in here? Oh, I forgot to provide the book ID. So I'm going to say book.id. We're going to grab and we're going to access the book ID because whenever the user clicks on this, the user will be able to access that book ID. There we go. So now you can see we have some styles which are not being applied for some reason. Now I'm just going to first check the logic. So if I click on it, we go to that page, the long walk, the long walk, uh, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. There we go. But for some reason, we have these underlines in the home. Where is the home? Let me just uh, remove these, just close them home.css okay so text decoration none this is accurate book link so if I come into home uh, oh I need to provide that ID because I've styled this anchor element based on the ID so I need to provide it with this ID so I'm just gonna grab this just copy that and I'm gonna say um, not within there, just outside the quotes. ID is going to be this one. Let's save that, reload the page, and there we go. Perfect. So if you click on it, you're going to be redirected to that page. Okay, so um, I'm just going to take a look at our admin page one, one last time just to make sure everything is in order. There we go. So if I go to authors, we have the ID, we have the name of the author, if we go to books, we have the ID, title, author, and release here. So the kind of information that you want to be shown in here in the admin is totally dependent on you. So with this, our entire saga of web full stack web development with um, Python comes to an end. We are going to move on in the next chapter, next section, where I'm going to very, very quickly and very uh, concisely, I'm going to introduce you to Jupyter Notebooks and what they are and what we can do with them. And from there, we what we are going to do is we are going to move on to the realm of data science. So in the next lecture, we are going to talk about data analysis in the next section. Right after that, you're going to have your pandas for data science essentials course. So it's like it's going to be four courses, the first of which it's just going to be like a very, very small getting started course. And the other three, they're going to be like giant, gigantic courses. Uh, so we are essentially done with uh, uh, the web development part of Python. So Python has a lot of applications. We are done with the web development part. From um, the next section onwards, we are going to jump into the data science part of Python, which is really cool, really interesting. 
really real world skills you're going to learn in those sections so uh, i did have a blast and i'm sure you did too and see you in the next section